guys welcome back to the channel and i'm so glad to be smiling and happy and why you might say well it's not about the fair lane wasn't anything wrong with the fair lane but you all know if you watched the last video that we had some issues with the maverick and guess what The Maverick is back. Yes, my Maverick is back. We actually picked it up this morning, but for a complete story as to what happened, let's get in the Maverick and take a little ride. Okay guys, let's talk about it. What actually happened? Let's get in here and take a little ride and we'll talk as we ride in the Maverick. I'm so glad to have my Maverick back because I haven't had my Maverick since the 24th of the 24th of May and it is now June the 6th so had I kept the original um, appointment that I had with my close by local dealership I would just be taking in my Maverick on today. So did I save any time? Possibly so, because if I had waited until June the 6th to initially uh, get my Maverick in to have the recall looked at, then I would just be starting the process today. So let's talk about what actually happened. Of course, the last video, if you didn't watch the last video, go back and watch the last video because I told you guys how angry I was about everything that uh, went down and how I went down as far as uh, getting the parts, not having a rental, all those things that I was angry about. Well, when I watched you guys' comments, it gave me some ideas and some things that I thought, uh, I think about a lot of things. You know, sometimes when we react or you know, jump right into a situation and give people a piece of our mind and, you know, just go off the deep end, we can lose some stuff. We can actually lose the respect of other people. Uh, we can also um, actually, instead of making a, a uh, difficult situation better, we can actually make it worse. And as a, um, a believer in Christ, anybody who is a believer in Christ, who a person who calls themselves a Christian and, and in reality um, are a Christian, we have a responsibility to uh, respond in a way that will reflect who we are as Christians. And I did get some responses that I should go up there and get in people's face and, and all the things that other people will say that they might do. Now, that may be what you would do, but what I would do is what I did, but I did take some of you all's advice. Um, I at no time ever uh, cussed, sweared, or used any kind of language that would be or interpreted as um, confrontational. I did express myself and let people know you know, hey, I'm not happy with uh, the situation. And then I did what we were all supposed to do as believers. I prayed about it. I listened to you guys' comments to see if you guys had any good advice. And one of the things that someone suggested, and I'd hope that I wouldn't have to do that, but it is what I did. Uh, after I talked to you guys on the last video, I took someone's advice on there and I actually called uh, customer care. Customer care transferred me uh, several times on the phone and said that they would get this straightened out. We're sorry that you know this is happening. You didn't get a rental. All the things that I complain about, they did apologize for. So I actually talked to a representative at customer care at the end of last week, last Thursday, in fact, and. On Thursday, he actually, it was a gentleman, he told me, he says, here's what I'm going to do. 
I'm going, I, I, and he did while I was on the phone. He contacted the dealership. He talked to someone there. They told him that they, you know, that the person that he was talking to was the only one there. She didn't know everything about it, but she, he did inform her that he would be contacting them the next day. And that is what he got back on the line with me and told me, he says, tomorrow morning when the dealership opens, I'm going to contact the dealership and see what is the status of your vehicle, where are the parts, and if in fact uh, it's going to be a length of time, then I will make sure that the dealership um, um, does the necessary things that they need to do to get you a rental. I said, okay, fine. What time are you going to call me tomorrow? He said, at least by noon. Well, I was a little bit taken back because on Friday, the following day, I made myself available. I made sure that my phone was on and I didn't take any calls between noon and about 3 30, 4 o'clock. Customer care guy never called me back. So in my mind, I said, oh no, now I've got to deal with customer care. Is this going from bad to worse? Because he didn't call. He said he was going to call. I asked him twice, are you going to call? He said yes. Now, so now we're at Saturday. And I actually put it all out of my mind and I did what we're supposed to do as believers. I prayed about it. I said, Lord, help me to know what to do, what to say, and who to say it to in my next actions and my next moves. What am I going to do? So I said, I'm not going to worry about it. It was my very first grandson's birthday. So what I did, I went to my grandson's birthday party, hurt back and all, and I had a good time. I didn't think about the Maverick. I put all of that out of my mind and just had a good time with my grandson and my family. On the way home from there, we left there probably about four, four o'clock. And at around, I would say about quarter to five, I get a text message on my phone and it says, Mr. Sims, your truck is, is ready. So I immediately try to text back um, or, you know, I'm thinking maybe we can get over there to the dealership and get it. So I text them and said, um, how late are you open and are you open tomorrow? Which would have been Sunday. I did not get a text message back. So I said, well, what we'll do, I'll, I'll check on the website and see um, whether the dealership is open on Sunday. We checked the website. It said it's open on Sunday. It said, uh, the service department is open from 12 until 6. I'm like, okay, cool. We'll go after church, go get my Maverick, and close the chapter on this recall um, adventure. Well, my wife and my mother and I all got into my wife's Ford Escape, drove one hour to the dealership, only to find that the dealership service department and though, although it does say it's open on the website, uh, I guess that information has not been updated. Uh, I'm not sure how often Google updates those things. But we got there and drove an hour. And the long story short, uh, the keys were locked up in the service department. And I, I, and I told him, I said, hey, they told me it was ready. I, um, we've driven an hour. And, and I showed him the text. And he says, oh, that's an automated text. That's why no one responded. But my, my, my question would have been, um, given the gravity of the situation, do you think someone might have called me on Saturday evening and said, hey, your, your truck is ready? And then at that time, I could have actually responded. Maybe they didn't have enough time. Maybe that automated thing was all they could do. And, and okay, uh, let's just say that. But I can tell you, if someone had called me on Saturday and said, hey, your truck is ready, we're not going to be open on Sunday, but you can pick it up. That, that, even that would have been fine, too. 
it would have saved me an hour, well, actually two hour trip, one hour there and one hour back without much run. So I was kind of feeling a little ticked off, but not so much. I felt like this, we're at the end of this journey now. Uh, I'm gonna get my Maverick back. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just, you know, blow this situation out of proportion from where it is. Uh, it is what it is. So today, I had my daughter drive me up this morning. We went in. I actually saw the original guy uh, that I had talked to when I first got there. And, and I did, when, when I first dropped my vehicle off there, I talked to him and I told him I have a YouTube channel and I chronicle pretty much everything that's on uh, my Ford Maverick. So he, yes, he knew that. He may have even gone on there and watched the video of how uh, upset I was last time. But when I got there this morning, uh, I was calm. I didn't know uh, how I would be received if someone would think that I'm, you know, this mean guy that wants his truck and he wants it now. But I didn't want to go in there with that kind of attitude. Attitude may get you quick service, but it does also leave a residue. Uh, you know, have you ever done something and, and said something and, and jumped all over someone and then you find out that you didn't know all the ins and outs of the situation? Well, that's what we have to be careful of doing. Because as a believer in Christ, at the end of the day, the impression that I need to leave on everyone is that Jesus loves you and so do I. Jesus forgave people all the time and he's still doing it today. He forgives people of their sins. He, he gives us what we don't deserve and that is grace and mercy. So as believers in Christ, we must give people grace and mercy as well. So when I walked in there, uh, I stood on the little weight mat and one of the ladies said, uh, sir, you can come down here. And immediately the guy who originally waited on me, he says, oh, don't worry, I got it. And he took care of me. He came over and he says, he says to, uh, says to me, he says, uh, uh, thank you. And he says my name. And I said, oh, no problem, sir. I appreciate it. <coughs> he says, me he said I'm sorry that we didn't you know handle things as professionally as we could have and I told him this I said you know what it's okay I said I understand that you know things can happen and, and some of us out of our control but you know at the end of the day it's okay and, and that's what that's the message that I wanted to leave with him it's okay yes it could have been handled better yes I was angry for a moment but I believe that you can teach somebody a lesson about even service by not giving people what you might think at the moment of your anger that they deserve. Because I'm so glad that God doesn't give us what we all deserve. Because we are sinners saved by his grace and at the end of the day, we must give others the same grace, mercy, and love that Christ has given to us. So that's all I'm gonna say about this final, hopefully final chapter uh, about the Maverick. I brought the Maverick home, I washed it, I had a nice ride home in it. Uh, the engine light is still on at the moment and I was told that it will, and I, and I know this from uh, times past, that after a few cycles of the error not being an error, the engine light will eventually cut off on its own. Other than that, I looked under there, you know you guys who have followed the channel, that I marked my exhaust to make sure everything, I can put it back the same way it was under there. Everything was tidied up under there, put back the way it should be. And I will say right now, for me, I'm turning the page, I'm closing the chapter of the recall, and I'm moving forward. Now, there were a number of people who chimed into the channel, whether they were new, old, or indifferent who gave, uh, who took us to another place. Like, uh, the Maverick is a piece of junk, they sold you a lemon, all kinds of commentary like that. At no time ever have I ever felt like that the Maverick was anything less than the very, very nice, exciting, and dependable vehicle that it has been so far. A recall something that happened spray in bed liner someone clears out the holes with a drill that puts holes in the tank 
yes, those things unfortunately can happen. Should they? Well, that's another debate for another time. But at the um, end of this video, I will say this. I'm still excited about the Maverick. I still love having it as my daily driver. All of you guys who are waiting on your Mavericks, I would say this. Be patient. If you um, have a build date, they're going to get to it. Now, if you have to have a vehicle, you can't wait. Um, yeah, I mean, you just have to do what you have to do. But uh, the stuff that's out here right now, I saw a, uh, a Shelby GT500 sitting on the floor that was way overpriced. And somebody's probably going to go in and buy it. And it was a 2007 a 2007 sitting on the showroom floor. There's not a lot of vehicles out here depending on where you live at. Now, if you want to settle for something else, eventually those Mavericks that are being built are going to get built. I wouldn't want to say that I was impatient or just didn't wait another week or so or wherever, you know, that's up to you guys. I can't tell you what to do, but for me, I had to buy my daughter a used car. We paid about $3,000 more than the car is worth because the stuff that's out here is junk. And some of the new stuff, if you can find it, is way overpriced. So am I gonna wait and pay sticker for my new Maverick? Obviously, I'm, I'm telling you, I wouldn't pay over sticker for a Maverick. Or am I going to go out here, at which case I'm gonna be buying another new car and I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, every last one of the new vehicles that are out there that are available, give or take one or two, or wherever you live, maybe it's a little different, everything that I have seen is overpriced. So, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna wait? Or are you gonna suck it up and pay higher <laughs> or more money than for something that's worth because you need something now? I mean, it's, it's kind of like a catch-22 either way. <laughs> Uh, we're not the winners in this, you know, when do we always have to pay sticker and above for vehicle, but that's where we are. So the end of the recall. And I can say I'm happy now. I'm happy I got my truck back. So, and I will say it this time. I won't tell you I'm not going to say it. Remember to like and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.